like this is a cooking game. Okay, Faisal, we're continuing now. Words you've heard before? Yes. Yeah. So fishing is, you know, trying to catch fish. Oh no, the spelling is different. Okay, don't mix them up. Stop pronouncing things French. Okay, so this is a picture of the reaction we were just looking at. Can you see one neutron is fired at one uranium? And then what happens is the uranium splits, becomes krypton, barium, three neutrons, and energy is released. And in fact, you worked out how much energy that is. This is an example. This is an example of what's called fission. This is when you take an atom and you break it into smaller atoms by firing usually a neutron at it. It doesn't have to be a neutron though. Here's a neutron. So that's all. So fission is another word for breaking. You're breaking the atom into smaller atoms. So the big uranium has become a small krypton and a small barium, and the result is to release energy. So this is called nuclear fission. The krypton and barium are stable? Um, I don't think... Well, I don't think they're... I don't know if they're radioactive. I have to look it up, actually. Um, usually, following a nuclear reaction process, the resulting atoms are stable. Because the electrons and neutrons are... They broke off yeah. already. Okay, so the definition is nuclear fission is a process, a nuclear process, and um, it's when the atom splits apart into smaller atoms. This process gives off a lot of energy, and it's used in a nuclear weapon and nuclear reactors. Please make note of this definition. You said only you can get pictures. Yeah, and some writing. Oh, uh, did you not hear that part when I said it? Where I said, we'll be looking at pictures from somewhere. Is Krypton... It's a Superman, so... Sorry, the, when I start typing in, is Krypton, and Google autocomplete is, is Krypton real? <laughs> and I, not the question I'm about to ask. Krypton is a noble gas. Yes. So it is really stable. Mm. What number was after the krypton in the reaction formula? You, did you write that down? Let me just have a quick peek. Krypton 85 might be unstable. Let's just see which one this is. This is Krypton 92. That doesn't sound, <laughs> doesn't sound stable. Krypton occurs in five isotopes. <laughs> And one of them is slightly radioactive. Let's find out which one. Could be the 92. It is not. 93? No. It says here 81 and 85. Shouldn't they be the ones with the more number of... That's what I thought. I guess life is funny like that, surprising you. So, yes, to answer your question, not radioactive. Right, I'm sorry, do you have this uh, definition written down, or do you need a... Do you have this? Yeah? Now, if you look here, what you could do, when the krypton breaks into two and releases the three neutrons, 
you could have the tree neutron, tr tree neutron hit into more krypton, and then what will happen to that krypton? Break two. Sorry, I keep saying krypton next, we're talking about krypton. Uranium. So you break the uranium, three neutrons come out, and then those three neutrons could hit more uranium, and then what happens? Three more neutrons come out, and so on and so on. So you have this process called a chain reaction, where one reaction causes the next reaction, causes the next reaction. But because three neutrons come out instead of one neutron, it could cause more reactions than what previously happened. It's exponential. And so you have one reaction, then you could have three reactions if all the neutrons hit. And then nine. Nine. And it very quickly, kaboom. So this is a chain reaction. The first generation is called the original uh, uranium that was split. And then each generation after that is caused by the neutrons coming from the previous reaction then. So this is the vocabulary here which you'll need. Chain reaction and then generations like this. This is much more exciting than biology genetic diagram generations. I think you agree. Added, come on. Oh, mother, brown eyes. Father, green eyes. Child. Probability brown eyes, 25%. Nah, boring. Vocabulary, please note, chain reaction. Have you heard this term before? Okay. okay. So the first uranium that gets hit is the first generation? Yeah. Okay. Now, to keep the picture simple, they only have two neutrons coming out from it, but we know that it was three neutrons. Uh, but the idea is just each level is a generation. Okay, continue. No. Okay. Are you drawing this? Okay. Don't make it too pretty, please. It doesn't need to be pretty. Okay, continue. Continue. Okay, great. So a nuclear chain reaction is a nuclear reaction in which a heavy isotope such as uranium splits and the neutrons released by the fission in of that atom strike and split other heavy atoms, which as a result hits another one after another one. Chain reactions are the main way of getting nuclear energy. Now, chain reactions don't always happen. If you don't have enough atoms, when they split, they have no neighbours to hit into. Make sense? So, critical mass is how much you need for the chain reaction to happen. So, think about it like this. Doesn't it also rely on the volume of the container? Yeah, so like, it's a, it could be a density thing too, but what's happening is if you have too few then when this one splits it might not hit the neighbours you need to have enough so that when one of them splits it can hit two more or even three or even three so the amount you need is called the critical mass if you have less than the critical mass, then there's not enough to make the chain reaction. If you have more or equal the critical mass, then there are enough. 
Okay, I'll give you a minute to write these definitions down. Mass of what? In this, in this the uranium. The, the source, the fuel. So it has to be more than the critical mass? Yeah. You're right in thinking that volume is an issue. Yeah, the, yeah, vo no. the, vo the vocabulary mm -hmm. here is unusual then in that case because we talk about it as a critical mass. So really if you want to think about it like this, it's a critical mass for a particular reactor. Yeah, so the critical mass is the mass of what? Oh, the critical mass is something that's calculated. So it's like saying you need at least two grams in the reactor before it works, before a chain reaction can take place. So this we're comparing what masses? The mass that you may actually use. So if you put one gram into the reactor, because one gram is less than two grams, then you don't get a chain reaction. Okay. Or if you make your nu nuclear bomb with not enough uranium, then no kaboomies. Okay, can I continue? I know there's a lot to write there. Yes? Dudes, continue? Yeah, okay. Okay, so, how to make a nuclear power plant. Before you write or draw anything, let me just explain the um, steps that's happening here. Yes? Oh my <coughs> please. please. Thank you. So, do you see here what you have? Um, these red lines here. These are called the uranium fuel element. So, basically, what you have is a big piece of uranium and the uranium is decaying and as the uranium decays what comes off of it? Yeah. Alpha, Beta, Gamma and this causes this liquid sodium to heat up so this liquid sodium gets really hot and uh, you have the liquid sodium exit the reactor and enter this chamber of water uh, this water can come in from a river or whatever and of course the water will get very hot and it will turn into steam and then the steam um, will turn this electric turbine 
which is what we did using uh, the right hand rule, no, the left hand rule. When you turn inside the magnetic field, you can make electricity. And then the hot steam comes back out and touches this pipe of cold water. This can be coming from a, a river or something. And the water gets heated up and comes back out. So the nuclear power plant is kind of clean because the only thing that comes out from the plant is warm water and this warm water is then used to heat the homes for free usually of the town nearby and this is kind of fair enough because people don't want to live by nuclear power plants so to kind of convince them that it's good to live by it they get free hot water. But doesn't this water get contaminated? No because conditions? the reason the water is hot is only because the steam that came out cooled down when it uh, uh, this water is hot because hot steam hit the water to cool it down. It's not in contact with the same water. No, this is in a separate pipe. And anyway, this water is not really in contact with this because it's the sodium that... Uh, yeah, but it won't like get any radiations? It won't escape the core or whatever? No, because this core has uh, a lead uh, casing. Yeah. Uh, no, no radiation should be coming out of the core. Um, so this is how a nuclear plant works. Now, note, and this is very important for safety, these fuel rods are undergoing a chain reaction. So they'll get hotter and hotter and hotter. So you don't want this to continue. You have these things called control rods. So you have the fuel, and then you have this control rod, usually made of something like carbon and you slide that down between the two fuel rods and the purpose of this is to so take some of the neutrons so that they don't hit more uranium so it's like um, you put this this is yours is it? No. so this is the control rod so the control rod comes down and it stops some of the neutrons from hitting more uranium it slows the process down. So if you want lots of energy, you pull it up. You want half energy, you put it down. No energy or not much, you put it all the way down. Yeah. Now this is important because when you hear on the news of accidents, usually it's because the control rod. The control rod gets stuck in the up position and cannot be pushed down. Because what happens is that there's usually some kind of seal here and this seal sometimes uh, melts and sticks to the control rod which means you can't put the, push the control rod down because it's sealed now. Uh, some, some, some seal broke and now it's melted onto the control rod. Uh, this is what happened in um, um, Chernobyl and uh, I think also Ellis Island and I think, I have a feeling most nuclear disasters are because the control rod has uh, jammed. And uh, maybe not the one in Japan recently, because um, that was caused by um, a tsunami. But usually it's caused by this. So tell me, um, if the control rod jams and the reactor starts to overheat, what do you think they might do as a sort of emergency? plan to try and cool the reactor down. Liquid nitrogen? Oh, there's not going to be enough liquid nitrogen to cool it down. Uh, Any ideas? Uh, stop the... no. If they stop this, then it will heat more. Any ideas? Well, usually the nuclear reactors are near a river because you need cold water to cool down the steam. So there's, uh, there's chambers here, uh, uh, hatches here and here that they can open up and let the river water or the ocean water fill the chamber up. This water will get very hot very quickly and then it comes back out the bottom. So literally they just pour hundreds and hundreds and thousands of litres, millions of litres of water onto the reactor to try and cool it down. Uh, once the reactor has been cooled down, then a team can go in and seal the reactor back up. <laughs> Not really. 
Uh, because all that's being released is alpha radiation. Yeah. Yeah. So as long as they stay two meters away from the fuel, you don't think it's going to be stuck. Well, they'd be pretty okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what usually happens when people die from trying to seal this up is that some of the fuel rod maybe broke and you know sank to the bottom. So they might not realize as they're working on it that they could be like standing on a fuel rod on the base of the reactor or something like that. That's usually what happens when there's a fatality then. In the exam, um, I don't know what quite they'll ask this question because they've not asked it yet. I have a feeling that they really care mostly about this part here. You have the fuel rods and you have the control rods. The control rods are made of something called a moderator. You know this word in English? <laughs> moderator tries to... Control. Control. Yeah. Uh, I don't think you need to draw this. I usually get students to draw this, but I don't think for the exam they'll ask you to draw it. Let me just check. <coughs> no, nope, sorry. They want you to, yeah. Technically, the syllabus says uh, describe how a nuclear reactor works, so I'm afraid technically it could come up on the exam. But uh, they haven't ever asked students to draw this, but just in case, I'd like you to draw it, since it is on the syllabus. Is this the only way a nuclear reactor would work? No, there are two types of reactors. The one with the big circle and the smaller circle inside? What? Lee, Omar, please draw this in your notebook. You know we only have one week left, don't you? This your good thing to cut right to me. Don't you? Why are you drawing this? Big circle, smaller circle than size. Yeah, no. Yes, this is it. Is that from Star Trek or something? No, this is it. Okay. They all look like this. Okay. That's the top view. Okay, I've not personally been in any reactors. We don't have them in Ireland. Nice. Cool. Dude, uh, which of your countries have nuclear power plants? I assume Iraq does not. We are. Do you have nuclear. a working one? No. That doesn't count. We are the nuclear bomb. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, Wong? Uh, nuclear power plants in Malaysia? Malaysia? No. No? Sure. You said? No. <laughs> Could be secret government ones underground, is there? No. Any if we'd have a nuclear reactor in the Middle East, we'd get bombed. So. Oh really? You'd be a target, huh? Of course. Like, 
they are just looking for a reason. Every country? All of them. No. Except for Saudi Arabia. It's just What's this one? Yeah. I have a feeling I have a feeling the Americans wouldn't bomb Israel if they had a reactor. Probably not. They are in the Middle East but they're not counted as one of us. <laughs> Fake Middle East, is it? Yeah. Um, right. I think I the other thing... They I don't tell. Do they? They don't tell. I thought the Israelis did. I have a nuclear program. Mm-hmm. I do, I thought so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, no, they may have p- uh, bombs and those, but I don't oh, think... Oh, but you don't think they have a power plant? Yeah. yeah. One of the difficulties with the power plant is you need to be near a water source to cool it down. Yeah, they are. I don't think there's much water in the Middle East. Unless you're near they are rivers or no, the, the, the ocean, right? They are, Israel, are on the side that's on the beach side. Yes. So they have the... So they could, then. The Eastern, no, Mediter- Mediterranean Sea? Mediterranean. Yeah. Or Black Sea? No, not Black Sea. Mediterranean. It's the sea that's Italy on. Yes. Yeah, Mediterranean. Yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Vietnam, do they have nuclear power plants? I don't know. What is it? Okay. I don't think USA would allow it. Vietnam? Mm. Maybe not. China has nuclear power plants. Mm. I know this. <laughs> it like builds one every week. <laughs> <laughs> and Omar, your home country is? Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia. They do or do not? Do not. Okay. And Ireland does not. In this way, Ireland is similar to the Middle East. They should have one in Ireland. Um, I don't really trust our utilities company to run one effectively. No, it's not the old company, it's the American company. That's why I'm like, they should. Hmm. I think it would face too much opposition from people. Why? I think people would prefer to see Ireland moving more into green energy. We spent too much money on fossil fuels, giving it all to the Saudis and the Russians. No. Yes, of course. The Gulf countries would need your fuel. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we lost Ireland. Oh, our biggest customer. What will we do? Uh, yeah, no, I think Saudi Arabia will probably take the hit of not having Ireland anymore. Okay, did you tr- you're still drawing that too. The internet for the second lesson. They're asleep. Or working on the chemistry essay. Is that you today? <laughs> Tomorrow. Not to, next Monday. The next study day. Who gives an essay to submit one week before the finals? Sucks to be you. Okay. Continue? No. It doesn't have to be too beautiful, just a little beautiful.
got that now for a while? Yep, cool. Continuing. Nuclear fuel is a material that can be burnt by fission or fusion to make nuclear energy. Um, so the only thing I really need you to note here is the most common fuel is uranium-235 and plutonium-239. These are typically the fuels used in the power plant. So can you make note of those two elements please? I just need those two elements. So, the actions of mining, refining, purifying, using, and disposing of nuclear fuel, that's called the fuel cycle. In nuclear engineering, a neutron moderator, so we were talking earlier about the control rods, uh, moderators are typically a material that slows the neutrons down, like, um, I think I said, Carbon, although I don't remember, I think there's two materials used. I'll tell you now. Moderator material, choice of moderator materials. Um, carbon is one of them. Yeah. You can uh, use other materials too hydrogen, deuterium oxygen, uh, but I think carbon is the most common one used. Uh, so the qu exam question might be give an example of a moderator material. Uh, such a material would be like carbon. Carbon can slow the neutrons down. Or oxygen. Or hydrogen. Yeah. Yeah? yeah? Should it be 238? No, it's the Oh, this one is here. Uranium 238 is here. This is a stable one. This is the unstable one. This is an isotope. This is the one that they use in the pure reactor, in the nuclear reactor. Okay, you got enough. Continue. No. I saw. What on earth are you watching? Film, games, and games. All right. Can I continue? 
Control rods. They're used to control the fission rate of uranium and plutonium. They're usually made of uh, things... Ah, that was the other one I was thinking of, but I couldn't think of it. Boron. Carbon and boron are used. Uh, or silver. Ooh, fancy. Um, they can absorb many neutrons without becoming... Uh, without decaying themselves. So anyways, control rods are what, used, what are used to control the fission rate of uranium and plutonium. And they're usually made of things like boron, silver, idium, cadmium, etc. Uh, so you'll need this for the exam. Yeah, there's only, there's only one more reaction after this, and then we're finished this lesson. And then we can have a start for the next lesson. Okay, I guess I lied when I said it's mostly pictures. What I really meant to say is mostly writing definitions and some looking pictures. at some pictures. Yeah. How many? Just a little bit more to the left. Three more slides. Okay, I'll go to the next. Is there anything important in the next one? Or Everything is important. Or are the preferences um, on the next three slides, I mean? Uh, we d we'll discover the secret of uh, cheap, clean energy for the future. Wait, come back, I'm not joking. Be quick, go on. Don't wash your hands, it will save time. Who's your speaking partner, Yusuf? <laughs> Who's your speaking partner? Uh, Monk. Oh, that should be okay. And Lee's? Quite good. Ah. And yours? I'm good. Oh, good. Got that? You tired for a while? Finishing your chemistry last night? Playing video games? Talking to boys? Then why so tired? Makes you tired? I like this weather. It's so nice and cool and... I actually like the weather. In Dublin, it's so different than the weather in Dublin. That is true, actually. It's like, in here I feel so sleepy, but in Dublin. Really? Yeah. Believe it or not, Dublin is the, for rain, is the driest part of Ireland. That's true. If you look at all the counties of Ireland, Dublin is the driest. And I think, I think Cork might actually be the wettest. So you'll have lots of rain in Cork. What's the weather in that warmest? In Cork? No, Dublin is the war warmest. Or one of the warmest. Sorry to tell you this. In No, I know that. Maybe what you like about Cork is that it's not the weather, but it's more open. Less people, less buildings. Fresh, yeah. Cleaner air. Okay, continue. Now, we looked at fission. Now we're going to have to look at fusion. And this is um, 
really, really interesting way of generating energy. So what you have, you take this one here, deuterium. What's deuterium? It's hydrogen, but with one neutron and one proton. And then tritinium is hydrogen, one proton, and two, two neutrons. You take a deuterium, you take a tritinium, and you smash them together. And when you smash them together, out pops a helium, and out pops a neutron. But what you discover is that the, ener the mass of the helium and the neutron is less than the mass of the two hydrogens. So what do you create? Energy. Now, what is really nice about this process is that there's no chain reaction, which means it is not dangerous, it is safe. When you want to stop it, you just turn the machine off. You just stop smashing the atoms together and you stop making energy. But it's very easy for me to say, just smash the atoms together. It's actually quite difficult to do. Uh, why do you think it's difficult to smash these two atoms together? Because yes. they're both, uh, they both have a positive thing. That's it. They so both have a positive charge. So trying to get them to hit each other is quite a difficult task. Because they always try to deflect. So they have to be going really, really fast to actually get them to smash together. So, how do they do this? Do they take two atoms and then fire them at each other with giant guns? No, they take no. millions of atoms and they fire them all together. No, not even this. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. They freeze time and space and then they fire them slowly. Yeah, they, they activate their time stopping machine, the watch I believe it is. <laughs> they take the atoms, they push them really close together and then hit resume. <laughs> No. You <laughs> no, I didn't. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Okay, let me explain how they actually do this. So, what they have, uh, they have the gas of the hydrogen <laughs> 2 and the. The scum guy. <laughs> Please focus. <laughs> this is really interesting, so watch this. They have the gas of hydrogen 2 and hydrogen 3 mixed together. Now, what charge is hydrogen 2 and hydrogen 3 here in the picture? Positive. So these are positive charges. Because the positive charge is moving, if you put a magnetic field around it, by using, um, which one is it now, the left hand rule, the magnetic field and the current, you can make a force. So for example, if there was a magnetic field around this, you can cause a force. So they put a giant magnetic field in a big ball, a sphere, around the gas. So now what you have is this. You try and make the gas into the shape of a sphere by putting it into a giant circular magnetic field. Nice. It is nice. Then what you do... Uh, around the edge of the sphere you have these little lasers yep they all fire at the gas what happens to the gas heats up. heats up we learned in materials when a material heats up what happens to its atoms moves, moves fast heat it up more speed the atoms up more speed them up fast enough when they collide they stick turn into helium so this gas slowly turns into hot from hydrogen to helium, and as it's turning into helium, what is released? Energy. The energy is released in the form of heat. So then what you do is you put some gas inside of this chamber, like lithium, and then the gas comes back out, and you have it cycle around like this, and this hot gas you have it wrap around some cold water. So the cold water comes in and when the water gets hot it becomes steam. And the steam turns the turbine. Yes, it is nice. Now think about this. This is hydrogen 
that's turning into helium and releasing a lot of heat energy. In other words, you have just made a miniature You've just made a miniature sun. It's a ball of hydrogen and helium. Yes, I told you you would like it. Oh God. It is. This is fusion of hydrogen. Yeah, nuclear fusion. Now, bad news though. This process is quite difficult to maintain because the gas always wants to try and break out of the magnetic field. It won't, it won't, and you need it to stay in a sphere. When this reactor was first created, they were only able to maintain the sphere, when I was in high school, in my physics book, uh, for two seconds. <laughs> Presently though, I believe they have it up to 12 hours. Once they can have it up to, say, 12 months, then it becomes reliable enough that it could be used to power cities. What is the waste from this process? No waste. No waste. Yeah. Are any of the materials radioactive? No. No, the hydrogen is just hydrogen. The helium is just helium. That's so nice. This is uh, future energy. It's what is going to replace, yeah, oil countries. This is what's going to replace fossil fuels. Yeah. Um, I believe there is a project between the EU and Japan for building the first fusion power plant. It's safe, it's clean, um, the only thing is where did the lasers get the energy from? Well, they need to get energy from somewhere. So the idea is you would build this plant beside like a waterfall okay. yeah, or beside a solar energy. Uh, and for each one joule of laser energy you use, you get out 10 joules uh, of electricity. So it's like you can use these to increase your green energy magnified by 10. Yeah. They can also, like, once they initiate it and it starts producing the energy, they use this energy to work the lasers. They could, yeah, they could. But the initiating part. Yeah, that's so true. you would still need an uh, energy so, source. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I think you still need to connect it up to something green. Yeah, but like if they are able to maintain it for 12 months, then the initiator. Yeah, will but it it will eventually shut down just because the process is yeah. difficult to maintain. And then how do you power it back up? You get the source again. Yeah. So yeah. You might as well you might as well just be beside the. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And anyway, it's not like that energy is wasted because the energy from the waterfall, you can just add that to the output for the city. Yeah, you know? And then when you think about it, like, okay, so if we can make clean energy with no waste, no radiation, then we can use this electricity for electric cars. And then you realize all of a sudden, a lot of current problems get fixed. So, hopefully, in our lifetime, uh, we can start seeing this replacing unclean energy. Yeah. Um, this is the definition. Nuclear fusion is the process of making a single heavy nucleus from two lighter ones. So, it's the opposite. Instead of taking one heavy and making two lighter ones, you take two light ones and make one heavy one. This process is a nuclear reaction. It releases a large amount of energy. It is the future, children. Current record for maintaining nuclear fusion.
see if we can find here. Oh, by the way, interesting. Who was presentation was on plasma? Yeah, this um, lithium, when it gets really hot inside the chamber, it becomes a plasma. So this is actually plasma lithium inside the core. Now I'm looking here to see what the current time record is. So it says, um, oh yeah, uh, well I, tell, I tell you how hot this gas gets. It reaches temperatures of 35 million Celsius. How hot is the sun? Uh, I'd have to check it up, but it wouldn't be much different. Yeah, but... Oh, why is this article saying the current record is still two seconds? That's making me sad. Ah, here we go. How long is the longest sustained fusion reaction? Oh, blasted. Someone must have lied to me when they said 12 hours. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll read this to you. How long is the longest fusion reaction achieved? Um, so it says most of the experiments use deuterium and uh, tritinium. That's not how you pronounce it. Uh, this is because it's a radioactive gas, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Only two places in the world have managed to do this. Um, JET, which I think is a Japanese one, and TFTR, which is a US one. Uh, the next step is a new plant built in France called ITR. Um, and they will demonstrate that they have, can maintain reactions for 5 to 10 minutes. Okay, so there's still a, it's still an improvement from 2 seconds. Uh, five to ten minutes, but like I said, until you start getting it for days rather than minutes, it won't actually become uh, something that you can use. But if you think about it, when I was in high school, it was two seconds, and now that you're in school, it's ten minutes. So at this rate, give it another fifty years, and you're done. What? Very mature. Okay. Okay, do it, do it, please. <laughs> All right, let's stop.